Well, the big lie this week is over the federal debt and whether we're going to default, and we're getting an incredible amount of uh, demagogic propaganda from the White House, from the president and his um, press secretary, as well as the Democrats. And I want to break this down for you because it will determine uh, the state of our economy in the weeks, months, and the years ahead. First of all, we need to look at the Constitution. And if I don't do it with you, nobody will. So let's take a look. Who's responsible for spending and borrowing? Raising taxes. Is it the president? Obviously not. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 1 of the Constitution. Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excises to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. But all duties, imposts, and excises shall be uniform throughout the United States. So it's the first part of that. It is not a suggestion. It is not ambiguous. This is a core power that the legislature has. And when you look at history, when you go back to Britain and look at the parliament with the king, this was something that the framers of your constitution looked at, and they wanted this power not to be with the king, that is, not to be with this presidency that they've created or this executive branch. They're supposed to execute the laws passed by Congress. They wanted to give this power, and they did, to Congress. Even more specifically, they wanted to give it to the people who were directly elected in Congress. The Senate at the time was chosen by the state legislatures. The House was chosen by the people. So you, we the people, have some say-so over the finances of our country. Do you feel that way today, by the way? So this is explicit. This is unequivocal. We don't need to read between the lines. It's not next to the abortion clause, where, of which there's none, of course. This is a primary core duty of the Congress, and specifically the House of Representatives. Now, we look at one of the duties of the executive branch under Article 2. Article 2, Section 3. This part, he shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed, meaning the president. The faithful execution of the laws passed by Congress. He took an oath during his inauguration, Biden did, to uphold the laws, even if you disagree with the laws. But Biden doesn't comprehend this, or he doesn't care. He violates our immigration laws willy-nilly. He violates uh, Title IX willy-nilly. He violates the spending clause willy-nilly when it comes to forgiving a trillion dollars in student loans. He thinks he owns the place. He thinks he can do whatever he wants, and so does his party. That's why his party wants to stuff the Supreme Court with more leftists in there so they can do whatever they want to do. That's why his party wants to eliminate the filibuster rule so if they have a majority of one, they can ram through whatever law they want. That's why his party wants to add Puerto Rico and D.C. as states so they can add four more Democrats. And that's why his party wants to change the election laws so they never lose. But even that's not good enough. So, again, Article 2, Section 3, he shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. So when you put that section together, as the framers did, with Article 1, who's responsible for laying taxes, collecting taxes, spending and borrowing Congress, it's the job of the President of the United States to protect Congress's role. Now let's look at the 14th Amendment, Mark. What does that have to do with anything? Exactly. Nothing. And yet Joe Biden and his advisors, some of these loony law professors who claim what the Constitution says when they despise it, and I would include among them, in my personal opinion, Lawrence Tribe, they say, Section 4 of the 14th Amendment, which was ratified on July 9th, 1868, that the people who ratified that and the people who drafted it intended for the President of the United States to have the power to go around Congress's core function under Article 1. And if he wants to spend, and if he wants to borrow, and if he wants to tax, he's free to do so. Why? Well, here's their argument. It's so preposterous, and yet there it is floating around in the ether. Section 4 of the 14th Amendment. The validity of the public debt of the United States, comma, authorized by law, comma, including debts incurred for payments of pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion, shall not be questioned. But neither shall the United States nor any state assume, shall assume, or pay any debt or obligation incurred in aid of, 
insurrection or rebellion against the United States, or any claim for the loss or emancipation of any slave. But all such debts, obligations, and claims shall be held illegal and void. So what was the point of this section? To clean up the finances of the United States of America and determine, as a general matter, who would be paid and who wouldn't be paid after and as a result of the Civil War. It has nothing to do with the full faith and credit of the United States today. In other words, what they're saying is, look, as a federal government, as a union now, these are the debts we're going to pay in services to suppressing the Confederacy. But we're not going to pay anything, not one plug nickel, in services in support of the Confederacy. That's what it says. And so Joe Biden, being the constitutional expert that he is, and Lawrence Tribe, in my humble opinion, being more wrong than he is ever right about the Constitution, this is the problem with activists who take a hold of our document. Oh, wow. Well, look what I found here in Section 4. So Joe Biden can issue federal bonds, Treasury bonds on his own and go around the House and the, and the Congress generally. And he can start paying off the debt. He can start doing all kinds of things. Now, this is the Democrat Party's dream. This is their dream. They talk about democracy. They hate democracy, unless, of course, it supports them. They only support elections when they win. They've built this permanent edifice, this massive federal government that really is um, their federal government. They want to pack the courts so they never lose court decisions. Just think about this. The power that they want to give Joe Biden. They would, now, they would deny it to Donald Trump in two seconds, or Ron DeSantis in two seconds. But look at the power. And Biden's actively thinking about this. Do you know what the answer to this is? To negotiate with the Republicans in the House, which he really doesn't want to do. So far in 2023, as of April, the federal government has had income from you of $2.69 trillion. But it has spent, so far, in that same period, $3.61 trillion. That's the problem. In 2023, the national debt, up to now, April, is $31.46 trillion. Trillion dollars. In 2022, the federal government collected a total of $4.9 trillion but the federal government spent a total of $6.27 trillion under Joe Biden. That's a $1.38 trillion uh, debt. $1.38 trillion added to the debt. Between 2021 and 2031, a 10-year period, Biden will increase the debt, the debt over 10 years by $6 trillion dollars more than projected before he came into office. From 2024 to 2033, Biden's borrowing, borrowing, causes interest costs to increase to a stunning $10.2 trillion, just interest over 10 years. Biden increases the public debt in 2023 to 2033, 10 years, from $32.7 trillion to $50.7 trillion. That's in 10 years. Now, think about that. Now, Biden goes out there and says, as does his spokesperson, that he cut the federal deficit by $1.7 trillion. Every single fact checker, and they're all on the left, says that's a lie. He didn't cut the deficit by $1.7 trillion. That's the reduction as a result of the COVID spending. Remember I told you he's including the COVID numbers for the base, but the COVID money is gone. That is, he didn't cut anything. So he's taking that because the Congress hasn't re-upped that money, and he's saying, look at me. I've cut the debt more than any president in American history. Now think of this logically. He is spending more than any president in American history. He's creating yearly deficits bigger than any president in American history. He's contributed to the debt bigger than any president in American history. He's expanded programs like no president in American history, and then he claims to be cutting the budget by $1.7 trillion. Yet, when the Republicans propose a very modest cut to spending, oh, we're going to lose education and health care, we're going to lose everything. Just follow the man. His lies are completely absurd. This is how a liar lies.
In fact, here we have factcheck.org, liberal, quote, all said the decline in the deficit over the past fiscal year is more than entirely the result of waning COVID relief and not a historic deficit reduction by Biden as his White House claims. Now, Biden says if the Republicans don't massively increase the debt ceiling, they've increased it a little bit, but they're demanding some cuts. I mean, the guy says he cut 1.7 trillion. They're not even proposing that. They want to slowly over 10 years reduce the debt because we're headed for a debt wall where your children and grandchildren are going to go broke and people are going to be using wheelbarrows to move their money around. But he says to you senior citizens, social security checks will stop. Really? Social security doesn't need Congress to authorize funds for each year. Instead, social security benefits are considered mandatory spending. They're paid from the program's trust fund. And therefore, the agency has the funds to continue paying benefits. So Biden lies again. What about Medicare? Medicare has its own trust fund. It'll pay physicians and hospitals out of the trust fund and reimburse them because that's paid from the Medicare trust fund. What else do we know as a matter of federal law? What doesn't shut? FBI. Federal Bureau of Imprisons, DEA, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, Department of Homeland Security, shucks. Customs and Border Protection, Transportation Security Administration, and Department of Defense. They don't close as a matter of law. Well, where are they getting this money from? In addition to the trust funds that pay Social Security, Medicare, also the VA is protected, the Veterans Administration. They're protected, too, because that comes out of other funds. Medicare, Social Security, the VA, protected. The military, protected. And yet that's what he keeps talking about. Now, a reminder, America, in 1975, Joe Biden introduced a bill that would have required new legislation every four to six years to reauthorize Social Security and Medicare. 1975. In 1995, he did the same thing. He introduced a motion on the floor of the Senate to do exactly the same thing. And today he accuses Republicans of trying to cut Medicare and Social Security benefits. It's almost like Joe Biden enters the Senate and he cottons up to the racists and segregationists and talks about the integration jungle and opposes integration in our public schools, which he did and then lectures Americans about white supremacy being the greatest danger we face. Here we have a man who's a throwback to the segregation period, warning all of us that tens of millions of Americans were just like him. Well, we're nothing like him. He is, in my view, a serial, serial liar. And to have a serial liar in the White House is a dangerous thing. Want to see more Mark Levin? Go to levintv.com and subscribe now.